Man of Steel. You'll believe a man can fly, I guess. CG. I like the movie. So, Man of Steel did have some problems. I'm not going to say it's a perfect movie, but it is not a bad movie. It's nowhere near the rating it gets on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, this movie has a lot of things going for it, and a lot of things going against it, and there's a lot of things that it introduces that I wish it would have went in that direction instead of what we got. Uh, for instance, the beginning of the movie gives us a beautiful look at Krypton before it explodes. And I really wish we had gotten a Krypton movie, a movie about just Krypton. And, and, uh, and in fact, during the movie, I was thinking it would have been great to see General Zod on Krypton before he became the kind of asshole he was, especially considering they mentioned that uh, in the movie in the beginning, there is a, uh, um, there is a line that mentions that he's pretty much changed. He wasn't always the way he is in this movie. And I would have loved to have seen that. Uh, it introduces that, and it, it's great. You know, it, it looks beautiful, and it reminds me a lot of um, the movie Avatar. Uh, not The Last Airbender. I would I, I try my hardest not to think about that movie. Um, that movie's like the game, you know? And every time I think about The Last Airbender, I lose the game. Just like you all lost the game. I'm sorry, you did. Um, but this movie reminded me a lot of um, James Cameron's Avatar uh, just in the beautiful setting, and it's just a great, beautiful, huge alien planet, and I wanted to explore that world so much more. And I feel like they put a lot of money and effort into creating this world that you only see for a short amount of time. Um, but that would have been great. Uh, they also introduce you to a, a young Clark Kent, someone in school who's developing his powers in class, and it's freaking them out. Um, that was such a, an, a very interesting take, and that was such a, a beautifully done um, scene. Uh, aside from the kids acting, I, I did not care for the kids acting very much, but the scene itself was great, and it was beautifully shot, and it was so well done, and I really wish I could have gotten a full-length movie on a young Clark Kent developing his powers somewhere kind of like um, the movie uh, or the show Smallville, or even in the early, you know, the first episode of the animated series where he learns he's got powers and he's he learns that he's an alien. I would have loved to see a movie live action on something like that. Um, you also see an adult Clark Kent trying to find his his the ship and his home and trying to find himself. And I think that was a very beautifully done part of the movie as well. And I would have loved to uh, dive deeper into something like that. Um, now, a lot of very, very great ideas, a lot of beautifully shot scenes, a lot of interesting concepts, but all of that together just felt just too jam-packed, especially in the first act of the movie. Um, it's almost inconsistent and almost incoherent. You're just jumping around throughout the movie, so of course that is a negative. However... It does give you a lot of positive, and because of all of what's being shown, you kind of get the feel that they did their research making this movie. The writers, the director, and say what you want about Zack Snyder as a director, cinematography-wise, he's a genius. Uh, storytelling, of course, he's got his problems, and like I said, very inconsistent, very incoherent what's going on in the beginning. However, everything is so beautifully shot, the actors go above and beyond, uh, performing, and I'm about to get into the actors here in a second, but like I said, there's so much greatness put into this movie, and I think that is what the biggest problem of it is, is there's so many great ideas, but it doesn't go so, it doesn't go deep enough into those ideas to where it's just a bunch of mumbo-jumbo science uh, alien talk and then some sad, sappy kind of drama, and it just kind of feels like a drag getting to the action. The action scene is amazing, and I loved watching that. Um, I mean, I am talking about the third act. Uh, pretty much from halfway through to the end, when Zod does come down, there's such a great fight, and a lot of people give a lot of shit to the movie for the um, throughout the fight. There's so many uh, advertisements. You know, there's there's a, 
a Home Depot or whatever. There's a Sears and there's a IHOP and there's a 7-Eleven and a U-Haul truck. And there's so many different uh, ads pretty much just thrown into this one scene. But it is still beautifully shot. And I love that it's grounded with the fighting. It's not up in the air. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's grounded. And that's, I think, the best word I can use for it. They're on the ground. They're fighting. The camera is on the ground with them, so it's kind of got that shaky cam feel to it, which makes it just seem a little bit more real. Now, I'm not a big fan of shaky cam. However, in a fight scene like this, especially a Superman fight scene, that shaky cam can really help and, like I said in the beginning, can really make you believe a man can fly. I mean, it was so beautifully done. You can see the CG in there, but at the same time, it's so quick that it's almost like... I. I'm not 100% sure, I never looked this up on how they shot this, um, but it really looks like it's practical, like the actors and the stunt work, stunt actors doing stuff, and they kind of just CG certain effects on there, so it, it has this great CG and practical feel to it, and that just works together so perfectly to make this such an amazing fight scene. Um, now, ugh, ugh. I'm drinking nasty-ass gross wine because, you know, I got nothing else in my fridge. Um, now, again, the story has its problems. There's, It's kind of inconsistent. There's, The story is, I don't know, it's just kind of a drag, and there's no real direction it's going in other than Zod, you know. Um, but here's the thing. I've never been a fan of Superman. I've never been a fan of his books, his comics. I've never been a fan of the character. However, I have to give credit to Superman for creating such a deep story uh, for this character. A good, you know, a great deep characterization for him. And it's very interesting. You know, it's more than just a guy loses his parents and he wants to fight crime and, you know, be a symbol of hope. You know, Superman has that S, and that is a symbol of hope. That is his home, cr that's the crest for the House of L. You know, of course, but it's more than just uh, an alien coming down to be a superhero. It's an, a story of an immigrant, someone coming down here who doesn't fit in uh, with humans, but he, was, he came down here against his will. He was a baby. He knew nothing about being an alien. He was raised human in Kansas by some farmers he was raised as a human who had these abilities that he had to keep in check because if he didn't it was going to show the world that aliens exist it's going to tell the world that there is a it's it I mean it can send this world into chaos I mean they mention it time and time again you know imagine how the earth will react when they find out someone like Superman is real exists and is on this planet um and that's a very interesting thing a lot of people give it shit especially the um uh paul kent as well as i like to call him he you know he tells clark you know you can't show your powers you can't save people you know and there was that bus crash you should have just let those kids die i mean he didn't say you should have let them die he says you know maybe but you know let them die, you know, he let, you know, let me die, you know, and yes, that's an issue to some people, but I feel that it's very, it stays very true to what Superman is, he can't do that kind of stuff, if he does, he is going to alert the world of his presence, and that can send a chaos through, through the streets, I mean, there's a a war on religion constantly going on and if people found out god doesn't exist aliens exist i mean that's I'm not saying that god doesn't exist in this universe but you know that's what the kind of mindset people will have you know if aliens exist how could god exist you know science is real science is right you know evolution and all this other stuff i mean it can send the world into chaos um so this is something that I felt is a very interesting and very important part of the Superman character. This is something that if you are going to do a live action Superman, if you are going to make a franchise out of Superman, you have to keep this in there. Um, 
And, you know, the creators of Superman, they did this on purpose because they were Jewish immigrants and they were being persecuted for being different and being immigrants. You know, they they used that 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 knowledge that they had and created Superman. So this is something that's really important and that needs to stay within within the franchise of Superman. Anything Superman, it needs to be there. And they put it there. And they did it beautifully. And I think it was so well done. There's this back and forth between, you know, Superman has one father telling him, you know, just fit in. Just do not let people know who you are. And then you have his other father saying, be a hero and save this planet and be a god to these people. And, you know, that's like an inner struggle that Superman deals with. However, it's being told through the eyes of the fathers. And that is something that's also very interesting to me because Superman does have two fathers. Superman has his alien father, you know, his birth father, and then his adoptive family. Um, so this is all put into the movie, and it's all very interesting and very great. Um, I, I, I went on a little long, so I'll try to wrap this up. Uh, Henry Cavill does Cavill? Cavill? I don't know. Cavill? I call him Cavill. Uh, Cavill, Cavill. Henry Cavill. Um, I think he's one of the best Supermen we've had in a long time. Um, you know, of course, going back to Reeves, he was, he was great. He was, you know, he was fantastic, but there was that fall off and it kind of got hokey. And, you know, that doesn't change what he's done. However, that does, it, it does sour on me a little bit. Um, so for, for the longest time, you know, the, this guy, Henry Gavel has become something that's, I never thought I would see, and that is a very strong, very, I don't know how to explain it. He's just one of the best Superman I've ever seen. Um, Amy Adams as Lois Lane. Uh, I mean, she started out great, but it became what it was in Batman v Superman. She becomes very weak. She's just there to just be the love interest and in someone that Superman has to save. Um she was introduced very strong. She was introduced as kind of a badass. Um, but then she quickly changed. She quickly turned into someone very weak. Um, and I have a big problem with that because Lois Lane, I've always read her, even in the animated series and um, in the comics, animated series, all that. She always seemed like, like strong-willed, very hard-headed, very strong person. Um, and she's not afraid to talk some shit to somebody. She started out that way so strong in this movie and then slowly became weaker and weaker and weaker um, until she was just nothing but Superman's bitch. Um, she gets put down so much by Perry White, who Lawrence Fishburne, I believe, nails the part. I think he is great. I feel like he this is a role that's perfect for him. Um, and anytime he's on screen, I'm just tapped. He got me right there. I'm with you, Perry. Uh, he does a great job. Um, so, again, the cast. I mean, this cast is star-studded. Zod's character, yeah, he was okay. Um, I, I liked the fight scenes. I thought he was very intense with his acting, which is great. I mean, this it's going back and it's staying true to what the story is, and that is he was born and raised to be a general. And that is his one and only goal in life. He was raised, this is something, he knows nothing other than protecting the race and doing what he feels is best for the race, regardless of what any, well, you know, what happens to anybody else. Um, he'll kill every Kryptonian that exists right now if it means saving lives of the rest of the Kryptonian, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of Kryptonian lives. You know, that's the kind of person he is. He'll kill a hundred to save a million. Um, so this is, it's it's very intense um, and it, it's good, but there, there are times I'm watching and it's just like, it's too intense and it's kind of, it's kind of draining to see him constantly going and going and going, um, which leads me to the end of the movie. Uh, there's again, a lot of shit that I hear about that ending and how, you know, a spoilers you know, if you haven't seen it, but I'm sure most of you have, um, how Superman just kills Zod. Now, let's be real here. That was never Superman's thing. It was never, you know, I don't kill. Um, 
But even still, even if you don't want to see your heroes killing, you got to think about it. You know, Zod was going to kill an innocent family. Superman had no choice. He was either let this innocent family die and continue fighting, continue destroying the city, or, you know, let me kill you. Um, <clears throat> and at the same time, you you still see that it affects him. It doesn't just, he doesn't just kill him and it means nothing. You know, it does affect him. Um, and then again, going back to the destruction of the city, you know, this was, of course, um, brought up in the second movie, you know, Batman v Superman. Uh, but I'm trying not to go too far into something else. Stick strictly to just this one movie. And again, that is not Superman's fault. A lot of people say Superman kills thousands of people during this fight. But again, you got to think, you know, it wasn't just Superman. Zod was there. Zod started it. Zod started destroying buildings, trying to terraform the Earth to the Kryptonian's atmosphere, or whatever, gravity and blah, 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 science. Um, and at the same time, he's also working with the military in order to stop Zod. So a lot of it also was military. So it wasn't just Superman. This is just, you know, you can't think of it as Superman destroyed the city as much as a, a war happened. And this is just one of the horrors of a major battle like this. Um, but all in all, I got to say, this is probably one of the best Superman, Superman, Superman films that that's out there. Um, yeah, I mean, this, there are problems, yes. There are issues, there are, you know, there's some, you know, um, plot holes. I mean, think about it. Why did Zod want Lois Lane on the ship anyways? You know, why is, um, you know, there's a lot of plot holes. I, that's probably the biggest one to me, is why the hell did Zod want Lois Lane on the ship? She did nothing. She served, served no purpose. Um, I don't know. You know, it's, it's plot, you know. But aside from the plot holes, aside from the silly stories telling, you know, that's still a great movie. It is still an interesting movie, and it's probably one of the best Superman films that is out there. Um, the action is there. The acting is there. Uh, cinematography is there. Uh, is there storytelling problems? Yes and no. There, I mean, it, it serves the purpose for the movie, but I wish it was a little bit more consistent. Uh, did they try to jam too much stuff in there? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that could have been its own movie. Did not need to be put into this one movie. Um, all in all, if I had to rate it, I'd give it about a 7. 7 out of 10. Um, and it does lead up to more, you know, DC Universe movies. And those have their own problems. Those have their own issues. But they also have a lot of great things Great things in them, too. You know, it's not all bad. Um, but this movie, as a standalone, Man of Steel, 7 out of 10, probably one of my favorites. Um, not one of my favorite comic book movies or movies in general. Let me... Uh, my, one of my favorite Superman movies. Um, so, uh, that's about all I got for you guys. So, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Did you like the movie? Are you one of the people that like the movie? And you, you can't really say anything about it because you get shit talked to. Um, you know, w let me know what you think. Are there any things that, that stood out in that movie that you didn't like? Were there something in that, was that something in that movie that you did like that really stood out to you? Um, yeah, so leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Please like this video. Share it if you can. I need the subscribers. I need the views. Um, but yeah, that's my time, you guys. And I will see you next time.